Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achind. As you can see, I have with me a Marshall Baby, who's touched upon a very touchy topic, if I may. <laughs> Hypersonics, extremely classified. India का तो program के बारे में कुछ लिखा नहीं है कहीं पे we don't find anything what is written, what is the game, what is not. एक आधा press release comes out. India has tested a hypersonic vehicle technology, something like that comes out, but nothing more. There is sort of a race, a छोटी सी race चल रही है between countries to get this technology. And sir, before I bring you in, I'd like to tell this small little story. Ukraine में एक छोटा सा command center बनाया था अपना NATO troops के साथ. Close to the town of Bakhmut, they made a small, छोटा सा command center जहाँ से they were, you know, controlling the counter offensive जब start करने वाले थे ये लोग. Obviously, they were emitting a lot of radio signals. वहाँ से काफी कुछ एक्टिविटी चल रही थी द रशन पिकटेड अप एंड वन हाइपरसोनिक मिसाइल इट सीम्स वेंट इन दिस कमांड सेंटर वॉज सपोज टू बी कितना डेढ़ सौ दो सौ फुट नीचे जमीन के ठीक है री इनफोर्स्ड एंड एवरी थिंग ऑब्वियसली इट्स बंकर सो री इनफोर्स बंकर एंड एवरी थिंग एंड आई बिलीव इसके अंदर कम से कम नहीं तो दो ढाई सौ डेढ़ सौ से दो सौ लोग खत्म हो गए विच इंक्लूड सम वेरी हाई रैंकिंग रिटायर्ड नेटवर ऑफिसर सम एडवाइजर सी आई ए हो लॉड ऑफ थिंग्स Now, what is this hypersonic missile? ये Kinzhal B करके इनकी मिसाइल है. It fires off from a MiG-31. It fires off वो क्या? Two plus uh, the Bear Tu-95 से भी fire होती है. What is this technology? ये क्या है? China and Russia के पास है. America के पास नहीं है अभी तक. India ने बोला है थोड़ा सा कुछ चल रहा है. We have the technology. हमको करना आता है. ये वो कुछ funny सा statement निकला था. अब हम लोग ना थोड़े से क्रिप्टिक हो गए इन चीजों के बारे में सीधी सीधी नहीं बताते क्या हो रहा है सो क्या स्टोरी है व्हाट इज दिस हाइपरसोनिक मिसाइल ये टेक्नोलॉजी क्या है इसका थ्रेट कितना सॉलिड है बिकॉज एट द एंड ऑफ इट हमको याद करना चाहिए इफ चाइना हैज इट देन ऑफ कोर्स इट्स कुछ गड़बड़ होती है तो इट बी पॉइंटेड एट अस फिजिबिलिटी क्या है व्हाट कैन इट कैरी एंड होल लॉट ऑफ अदर थिंग्स वील ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड टुडे सर थैंक यू सो मच एंड फॉर अलाउंग मी दिस 2 मिनट्स टू गिव दिस शॉर्ट इंट्रोडक्शन क्योंकि I thought it was very important to tell the viewers कि भाई कहाँ से discussion start हो रहा है। This is a new sort of a technology which is coming। जैसे drones आए थे अभी drones have become a revolution in terms of warfare। I mean आप वो रशिया के videos देखिए तो बंदा हैरान हो जाता है यार क्या है ये? Is this the next, you know, interesting technology like drones? What is your opinion, sir? Good evening and welcome to the show. Hi, good evening, Adi. Thank you very much and uh, good evening to your viewers. Uh, you know, ye uh, when you say what is this hypersonic, ye uh, it's like asking ye jivan uh, kya hai. You know, it, yeah, it is yeah. as simple or as complex uh, as that question. Okay. Now we all know hypersonics actually. You have seen so they have been on the scene for quite some time. Okay, but they became more prominent uh, with that news that Russia ne hypersonic missiles launch kar di. Kinzhal uh, was launched yeah. and the devastating effect uh, that you noticed. But what happened is uh, my understanding is that after all, Kinzhal missile three days ke baad, precisely three days ke baad, Ukraine uh, says that we have sent six Kinzhal missiles intercept. After that, the Patriot system came. So then, its effect was a little reduced. And they saw that Russia had stopped using it. You know, it stopped. So it did not have that uh, effect of like Brahmastra. Okay, like Brahmastra. So it did not have that effect of like Brahmastra. Okay, like Brahmastra. So it did not have that effect of like Brahmastra. Okay, like Brahmastra. So it did not have that effect of like Brahmastra. Okay, like Brahmastra. So it did not have that effect of like Brahmastra. Okay, like Brahmastra. You know, one weapon and the war came to stop. So these hypersonics, after all, these Kinzhal missiles did not have that kind of effect. It's over an year that they were used, and war is still uh, continuing. Ah. So were they? Uh, what were they like? You know, were they hypersonics? Of course, they were hypersonics. If you talk of purely the speed. बट जैसे पूरी टेक्नोलॉजी अगर हाइपरसोनिक्स की हम बात करें तो मेरे को एक यू नो उर्दू का शेर याद आता है सम वाइज मैन सेट ये सेट के भाई कुछ और भी होती हैं खुदा दादे बख्शिश खुदा दादे मींस खुदा की दी हुई यू नो गॉड गिवन बख्शिश इज लाइक काइंड ऑफ स्पेशल क्वालिटी यू नो बख्शिश बख्श जैसे खुदा आपको कुछ क्वालिटी देता है कि भाई कुछ और भी होती हैं खुदा दादे बख्शिश हर बहते पानी को दरिया नहीं कहते यू नो दिस एवरी फ्लोइंग वाटर डज नॉट क्वालिफाई टू बी कॉल्ड ए यू नो रिवर ए ग्रेट रिवर देर आर सम अदर क्वालिटीज आल्सो सो आई थिंक इट अप्लाइज इक्वली गुड टू 
hypersonic system that it is not just the speed there are some other aspects which qualify it to be called hypersonics aur isiliye shayad ab dekhenge jaise hum aage aage baat karte hain ki kya karan hai ki aisi feeling aati hai ki bhai america jaise piche reh gaya china aage nikal gaya russia aage nikal gaya aur ye programs to chal rahe hain kab se you know x15 dinosaur project etc padhe german v2 rockets hypersonic the ek kism ke kab se ye technology chal rahi hai sare space shuttle vehicles jo jaate hain सब हाइपरसोनिक हाइपरसोनिक तो एक फाइव मार्क्स की हम बात करते हैं बीस बाईस मार्क तक यू नो स्पीड पकड़ी है वेपन्स ने तो एक मार्क एवरेज सॉरी बट एक मार्क वन मार्क ऑन एन एवरेज ऑल्टीट्यूड तीस चालीस हजार फुट पे कितना स्पीड होगा सर व्हाट वुड बी द एक्सेस स्पीड सो दैट यू नो सारे व्यूअर्स एक बारी वो दिमाग में आ जाए कितना स्पीड है ग्राउंड लेवल पे जैसे सी लेवल पे अंडर आई काउ कंडीशन जैसे हम बोलते हैं इंटरनेशनल सिविल यू नो एविएशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जो है उसने एक पैमाना दिया हुआ है कि भाई सी लेवल पे टेम्परेचर इतना होना चाहिए डेंसिटी इतनी होनी चाहिए प्रेशर इतना होना चाहिए वहां पे इट इज अबाउट 332 340 थ्री फोर्टी मीटर्स पर सेकेंड सो आप देखें तो तकरीबन बारह या सात माइल्स पर आवर की स्पीड है ठीक है मान के चलिए आप तीन मीटर मोटा मोटा पकड़ लीजिए पर सेकेंड की स्पीड है पर जैसे ही ऊपर जाते हैं तो टेम्परेचर कम होता जाता है तो स्पीड ऑफ साउंड भी कम होती जाती है डेंसिटी कम होती जाती है तो जैसे वैक्यूम में स्पीड ऑफ साउंड जीरो होगी यू नो इसको चाहिए स्पीड ऑफ साउंड को कैरी करने के लिए मीडियम चाहिए सो so, जैसे जैसे मीडियम कम होता जाता है डेंस तो स्पीड ऑफ साउंड कम होती जाती है पर इतना फर्क नहीं पड़ता है तकरीबन तकरीबन उतनी स्पीड मान के चल सकते हैं जितने एरिया की हम बात कर रहे हैं right so what happens is now uh, let's come to we will just come back to the supersonic thing jaise aap hum kya hai supersonic hai fir hypersonic hai ye words ka kya matlab hai okay jaise 100 km prati ghanta 200 300 400 kuch fark nahi padta speed badhti jati hai fir aisa supersonic pe kya ho jata hai theek hai fir okay supersonic bhi se mark 1 ke ek mark se zyada ho gayi to supersonic ho gaya फिर मार्क दो पे कुछ नहीं तीन चार कुछ नहीं सडनली मार्क फाइव पे हम बोलते हैं हाइपरसोनिक हो गया यू नो द स्टैंडर्ड डेफिनेशन ऑफ हाइपरसोनिक इज दैट समथिंग मूविंग मोर देन मार्क फाइव मार्क फाइव से ज्यादा जो चलती है उसको हाइपरसोनिक बोलते हैं और आप कैलकुलेट करेंगे तो तकरीबन मान के चलिए दो किलोमीटर पर सेकेंड जो स्पीड होगी तकरीबन हाइपरसोनिक होगी यू नो मार्क फाइव से थोड़ी ज्यादा होगी सो दो किलोमीटर पर सेकेंड मोटा मोटा दिमाग में रखिए कि हाइपरसोनिक स्पीड यहाँ से शुरू होती है पर है क्या ए, ए, किसने सोचा कि भी अच्छा एक मार्क पे सुपरसोनिक बुलाएंगे पांच मार्क मार्क पे हाइपरसोनिक बुलाएंगे इट इज लाइक यू नो पॉइंट टू नोट इज के इन स्पीड्स पे ना कुछ चेंजेस होती हैं सडन चेंजेस लाइफ की बात करें तो आप बोलते हैं चाइल्ड है बच्चा है वो बढ़ता जाता है फिर आप बोलते हैं टीन हो गया ओके okay, ऐसा क्या है टीन आप उसको टीन एजर बुलाने शुरू कर देते हैं ताकि आप उसमें कुछ चेंजेस आती हैं वो बिहेव डिफरेंट करना शुरू कर देता है उसकी रिक्वायरमेंट्स डिफरेंट हो जाती हैं तो वो बोलते हैं हम बोलते हैं कि ये टीन है ठीक है फिर अडल्ट हो गया फिर यू नो वी से मिड लाइफ क्राइसिस आ गया फिर एक नॉर्थ इंडिया में यू नो कहावत मशहूर है कि कोई आदमी सठिया आ गया बोलते हैं यू नो सिक्सटी ईयर्स वर कंसिडर्ड के सडन चेंजेस आती हैं कि मे बी उसको सुनना कम हो जाएगा दिखना कम हो जाएगा उसकी सोचने की शक्ति उसकी एनालिसिस पावर एक्सेट्रा सम ड्रास्टिक चेंज है then yeah, when yeah. people say ke bhai something so, you know you give it a milestone terminology so, type terminology theek hai to ye hmm. supersonic hypersonic pe kuch changes hoti hain jo hum dekhenge ki kya changes hoti hain okay par ye jab hypersonic ki uh, baat chalti hai to uske pehle kya the ye jo rockets hai jaise humne bola v2 aur jitne space uh, launch rockets hain सारे ही हाइपरसोनिक्स जाते हैं मच मोर देन हाइपरसोनिक्स यू नो लाइक मार्क ट्वेंटी मार्क ट्वेंटी फाइव पे पर वो क्यों नहीं ऐसे हाइपरसोनिक्स के दायरे में आए वो इसलिए कि नाउ यू वुड हैव सीन के जितने रॉकेट्स हैं ना ये अपना फ्यूल और ऑक्सीजन साथ में लेके चलते हैं यू नो देट फ्यूल सिस्टम देयर फ्यूल एंड ऑक्सीजन इज रैप्ड इन टू रॉकेट यू नो सॉलिड फ्यूल सिस्टम में और इवन लिक्विड और क्राइजोनिक ऑल्सो वेन वी से देर इज लिक्विड हाइड्रोजन लिक्विड ऑक्सीजन राइट द रॉकेट कैरीज इट अलॉन्ग विद इट नाउ Uh, with which the fuel weight becomes hell of a lot. Like we talked last time, that just about 80 to 90 percent of weight in a rocket, that was the fuel used. Okay, 500 kg warhead for you, you are launching a rocket for 6 ton, 7 ton. Okay, so then they thought that it is possible that we can not take a piece of it. For example, if you are going on a trip, for example, if you are going on a trip, for example, if you are going on a trip, for example, if you are going on a trip, for example, if you are going on a trip, for example, if you are going on a trip, for example, if you are going on a trip, for example, if you are going on a trip, 
और अगर आपको कोई बोले कि भाई आप पानी मत ले जाओ पानी रास्ते से ले लेना तो आप चारों डब्बों में रोटी भर सकते हो या फिर उसके दो डब्बे कम कर सकते हो वेट करेक्ट कि अगर आप बोले कि हम पानी रास्ते में से ले लेंगे ठीक है पर इसके लिए आपको एक चीज का ध्यान रखना पड़ेगा कि आपको रास्ता वो चुनना पड़ेगा जहां पर पानी मिलता हो अब ऐसा नहीं है कि आप ये डिसीजन ले लें कि हम पानी रास्ते में से ले लेंगे फिर उस रास्ते पे चल पड़े जहाँ रास्ते में पानी नहीं है तो फिर प्रॉब्लम हो जाएगा नाउ हाउ डू आई हाउ डू आई रिलेट टू दिस इज दैट व्हेन एयर ब्रीदिंग यू नो कॉन्सेप्ट केम इन फ्रॉम रॉकेट्स तो दे थॉट के लेट मी कैरी ओनली फ्यूल जो एयर है वो हम एटमोस्फियर से ले लेंगे क्योंकि एयर तो है एटमोस्फियर में तो वाई डोंट आई टेक एयर फ्रॉम द एटमोस्फियर so point to note here is that any air breathing engine if it decides ke air jo hai atmosphere se le lenge to classically usko atmosphere ke andar rehna padega now it cannot escape atmosphere and hope ke main air breathe kar lunga right hmm. so that is where the concept of you know air breathing engine is restricted to uh, atmosphere abhi क्या है एटमोस्फियर में यू नो हम 30 40 किलोमीटर तक मान के चलते हैं कि जहां डिसेंट एटमोस्फियर इज अवेलेबल फॉर दिस काइंड ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी तो उसमें क्या है कि एटमोस्फियर में फिर एयर है तो जहां एयर है उस स्पीड पे ना एक चेंज आती है जैसे एयरक्राफ्ट या कोई भी ऑब्जेक्ट है स्पीड ऑफ साउंड के करीब पहुंचता है तो शॉक वेव्स फॉर्म होना शुरू हो जाता है हमने सुना होगा साउंड बैरियर यू नो होता है शॉक वेव बनती है पर इसको थोड़ा सा समझना जरूरी है क्योंकि जो हमारी आगे की स्टोरी है उसको फिर यह समझाने में मदद करेगा कि शॉक वेव किस लिए बनती है क्योंकि एयर ना हम नॉर्मली सोचते नहीं पर एयर कंप्रेसिबल है यू नो मैं आप हाथ ऐसे चलाएंगे तो आपको पता नहीं चलेगा कुछ ओके बट एयर इज एक्चुअली कंप्रेसिबल अब जिस स्पीड से ये हाथ चल रहा है एयर के जो पार्टिकल्स इनको इनफ वार्निंग मिल रही है कि भी कुछ चीज आ रही है तो उसके लिए जगह बना देते हैं आपको महसूस नहीं होता पर यही अगर बहुत तेज आता तो क्या होता है कि एयर पार्टिकल्स को वार्निंग नहीं मिलती कि कोई चीज बहुत तेजी से आ रही है तो वो दे स्टार्ट बंचिंग अप जैसे वाटर कंप्रेसिबल नहीं है आप ट्यूब देखिए कोई जैसे होली की पिचकारी होती है ठीक है उसमें पानी भर दीजिए और उसके आगे से उसकी नली बंद कर दीजिए पंप को आगे बढ़ाइए तो नहीं बढ़ेगा वो राइट पर अगर वो खाली पिचकारी हो तो आप काफी हद तक उसको आगे लेके जा सकते हैं इसका मतलब उसके में एयर जो है वो कंप्रेस हो रही है ठीक है Uh, और जैसे एक मोड है आप कारें देखिए चलती हैं यू नो सड़क पे कारें चल रही हैं लेट्स से देर इज ए टर्न और वहां पे आगे कोई ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन है जो आपको नहीं पता अब वो कारें ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन की तरफ जा रही हैं या ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन कार की तरफ आ रही है एक ही चीज है रिलेटिव है राइट सो so, हाँ. हम क्या सोचते हैं कि भाई जैसे कारें हैं सौ कारें हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल वो बीस किलोमीटर तीस किलोमीटर की स्पीड से जा रही है और आगे मोड जैसी मोड लेती है वो उनको ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन दिखती है वो ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन को अवॉइड करके निकलती जाती है तो जो इस तरफ लोग हैं मोड पे उनको कुछ पता नहीं उनको पता नहीं चलेगा कि कुछ आगे है क्या इफेक्ट हो रहा है वो उसी स्पीड से चलती जा रही है पर आप इनकी स्पीड आप सौ किलोमीटर कर दीजिए तो जैसे ही सौ किलोमीटर पे कार बढ़ेगी ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन दिखेगी तो स्लो हो जाएगी तो पीछे वाली जो कार्स है वो एकदम बंचअप होना शुरू हो जाएगी तो आपको इस तरफ भी पता चलेगा कि ये बंचअप होना शुरू हो गया ओके दैट मीन समथिंग इज कमिंग वेरी फास्ट टूवर्ड्स यू अबाउट विच यू हैव नो वार्निंग so things will start bunching up like the cars will start bunching up you will see a kind of jam right shock wave is nothing but the jam created by air particles par usme kya hai ki fir khas changes paida hoti hain ki jo shock wave ke piche pressure badhta hai aur fir temperature bhi badhta hai ye do khas cheeze hain jo ye hypersonic technology samajhne mein kaam aati hain aage ki bhi shock wave jab banti hai तो उसके पीछे सडन चेंजेस होती हैं तो जब स्पीड बढ़ रही थी 200 300 400 500 किलोमीटर तो एक लीनियर किस्म का बिहेवियर था यू नो एवरीथिंग वाज हैपनिंग इन ए लीनियर फैशन बट जब शॉक वेव बन गई तो सडन चेंजेस जैसे ड्रैग बढ़ गया प्रेशर बढ़ गया टेंपरेचर बढ़ गया सडनली इंक्रीज सो वी सेड के यार इस पे यहां पे आके ना कुछ सडनली चेंज हो रहा है तो इसलिए उसको हमने बोला सुपरसोनिक ऐसे ही जब सुपरसोनिक एक पड़ाव पार कर गए आप तो फिर मार्क दो मार्क तीन मार्क चार पे एक लीनियर किस्म का बिहेवियर शो करते रहे पर फिर देखा साइंटिस्ट ने कि जब मार्क फाइव को चीज क्रॉस करती है तो फिर इसमें और ड्रास्टिक चेंजेस होनी शुरू हो जाती है तो इसलिए वो पड़ाव जो था हमने बोला कि भाई इसको देखने की जरूरत है ब्रेक द यू नो स्पीड रिजम हेयर सो दैट केम टू बी नोन एज हाइपरसोनिक तो वो क्या वहां पर होता है सडन चेंजेस अकर विच यू नो वी विल सी नो गेटिंग मोर स्पीड हैज ऑलवेज बिन ए मैन क्वेस्ट के भी और तेज और तेज और तेज राइट तो फिर कैसे तेज एयर ब्रीदिंग कॉन्सेप्ट कैसे बना के हमने जेट इंजन हमने डिटेल में बात की हुई है जेट इंजन पे ठीक है तो जेट इंजन आपको लेके जाता है वो एयर ब्रीद करता है फ्यूल लेके जाता है फ्यूल बर्न करता है एयर एटमोस्फियर से लेके 
कैसे करता है हमने देखा था कि कंप्रेसर होता है उसमें राइट जी तो कंप्रेसर कंप्रेस करता है एयर को प्रेशर बढ़ाता है उसका फ्यूल उसके साथ मिक्स करके बर्न होके आपको एनर्जी दे रहा है राइट पर जेट इंजन की एक लिमिट थी क्योंकि कंप्रेसर बियॉन्ड ए पॉइंट कैन नॉट कंप्रेस क्योंकि जब वो जितना तेज घूमेगा फिर उसके वो जो ब्लेड की स्पीड है वो सुपरसोनिक जानी शुरू हो जाती है उसकी ब्लेड पे शॉक वेव्स बननी शुरू हो जाती है एटसेट्रा एटसेट्रा सो देर इज ए लिमिट सो एक जेट इंजन आपको मार्क टू मार्क टू तक लेके जा सकता था अब उसके आगे क्या देन साइंटिस्ट से रियलाइज के यार प्रेशर तो शॉक वेव के पीछे भी बढ़ रहा है तो ये जो शॉक के पीछे प्रेशर बढ़ रहा है फिर इसको यूज क्यों नहीं करते हम फ्यूल के लिए तो इजाद हुई रैम जेट की रैम वर्ड है इंग्लिश का जैसे टू रैम समथिंग यू नो जैसे हम धकेलना किसी चीज को पुश hmm. करना स्टफ करना किसी में यू नो ऐसे जोर से आके कुछ चीज लगे तो आज यू नो यू ही रैम्ड इन जैसे कार क्रैश होती है सम कार रैम्ड इन टू दिस यू नो तो एटमोस्फियर में क्या है कि जब मार्क टू मार्क थ्री तक स्पीड जो होती है तो स्पीड रैम्स इन दिस इंजन और जो शॉक वेव्स होती हैं उसके पीछे जो स्पीड होती है वो सब सोनिक हो जाती है क्योंकि प्रेशर बढ़ गया उस इट हैज टू क्रॉस दैट शॉक वेव बैरियर है वो एक किस्म का तो वो सब सोनिक स्पीड जिसमें प्रेशर बढ़ गया है टेम्परेचर बढ़ गया है वो उसको बर्न करके रैमजेट ने आपको एनर्जी देनी शुरू कर दी सो मार्क टू मार्क थ्री के ऊपर रैमजेट केम इन फंक्शन विच स्टार्ट गिविंग यू थ्रस्ट नो रैमजेट हैज नो मूविंग पार्ट देर इज नो कंप्रेशर मूविंग इन देयर इट इज सिंपली टेकिंग इन प्रेशर क्रिएटेड यू नो बिहाइंड द शॉक वेव के पीछे जो प्रेशर क्रिएट हो गया है उसको बर्न करके वो एनर्जी uh, देता है तो ये दो uh, तीन मार्क चार मार्क तक पांच मार्क तक भी रैमजेट uh, काम करना शुरू कर दिया बट प्रॉब्लम क्या है रैमजेट में कि ये जीरो स्पीड पे काम नहीं करेगा क्योंकि एयर हैज टू बी रैम्ड इन टू इट सो इट विल कम इन टू ऑपरेशन ओनली वंस यू हैव ए शॉक वेव एंड शॉक वेव विल फॉर्म बिकॉज उसका काम ही शॉक वेव से शुरू होता है तो जब तक शॉक वेव नहीं बनेगी रैम जेट काम भी नहीं आएगा करेक्ट कहने को मार्क वन पे भी रैम शॉक वेव बन जाएगी पर उतनी पावरफुल उतनी नहीं बनेगी जो रैम जेट को ऑप्टिमम uh, ऑपरेशन दे सके तो जनरली मार्क टू मार्क टू पॉइंट फाइव के बाद जो रैम जेट की एक्चुअल एफिशिएंसी है वो निकल के आती है राइट सो यू हैव टू हैव सम मीन चाहे रॉकेट के थ्रू चाहे कैसे कैरी इट टू मार्क टू प्लस फाइव जैसे हमारी ब्रह्मोज मिजाइल है वो रॉकेट के थ्रू मार्क टू तक पहुंचती है तो उसमें फिर रैमजेट इंजन काम करना शुरू कर देता है राइट सो एस आर सेवेंटी वन क्लासिक एग्जाम्पल था यू नो जेट इंजन था उसमें जेट इंजन लेके जाता था उसको मार्क टू टू पॉइंट फाइव के बाद जेट इंजन फिर क्लोज हो जाता था तो उसकी सराउंडिंग वो रैमजेट रैमजेट राइट हाँ नाउ बट वी वॉन्ट मोर स्पीड तो नाउ ये रैमजेट में क्या है कि ये क्या करता था जो उसके पीछे फ्लो सबसोनिक रहता था और जब आप सुपरसोनिक फ्लो को सबसोनिक बनाते हैं तो प्रेशर राइजेस टेम्परेचर राइजेस वो जो टेम्परेचर बढ़ता जा रहा है अब उसी टेम्परेचर को इसने और गर्म करना है पर एक हद के बाद वो टेम्परेचर खुद ही इतना ज्यादा है कि उसको और कितना गर्म करोगे राइट सो देन रैमजेट ऑल्सो गेव अप सो देन पीपल थॉट कि यार इसको सबसोनिक क्यों करें इसको फ्लो को लेट्स कीप इट सुपरसोनिक ताकि इसका टेम्परेचर थोड़ा कम रहे तो अगर सुपरसोनिक फ्लो को बर्न करूंगा तो टेम्परेचर एयर में ना अभी उसकी आ, आ, उसकी जगह है और या उसमें मार्जिन है कि टेम्परेचर और बढ़ाया जा सके जिससे बना हमारा स्क्रैम जेट एस सी सुपरसोनिक ओके दैट सुपरसोनिक स्क्रैम जेट वॉज यू नो केम टू बी नोन एज स्क्रैम जेट ओके अब वो क्या है कि उसमें जो शॉक वेव के पीछे फ्लो जो है सुपरसोनिक रखा जाता है राइट और वो सुपरसोनिक फ्लो को बर्न करता है ओके okay? और उसमें फिर और थ्रस्ट बढ़ाता है तो वो जो स्क्रैम जेट है वो मार्क फाइव के बाद काम में आता है सो यू सी द स्टेजेस सो जेट रैम जेट स्क्रैम जेट रैम जेट तो जेट इंजन कैन बी रिप्लेस बी ए रॉकेट ऑल्सो सो इट कुड बी रॉकेट यू नो आई मीन बट जेट का जो आपने फ्यूचर बताया मतलब आगे का लेवल बताया इट्स नॉर्मल जेट स्क्रैम जेट एंड रैम जेट रैम जेट एंड स्क्रैम जेट यू नो जेट रैम जेट एंड देन स्क्रैम जेट ओके हाँ अब इसमें क्या है कि नौ भी से कि जो स्क्रैम जेट है देखिए जितना टेम्परेचर पैदा करता है यू नो सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड सेवनटीन हंड्रेड डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा तो जैसे हमने बोला मटीरियल्स की प्रॉब्लम है ना फ्यूल कौन सा यूज करें उसकी प्रॉब्लम है हाइड्रोजन इज ए गुड फ्यूल कूलिंग करता है अच्छी करता है इट्स इनफ्लेमेबिलिटी वेरी वेरी हाई बट प्रॉब्लम है कि बहुत लाइट है हाइड्रोजन यू नो उतने वेट के लिए ह्यूज टैंक चाहिए जो स्पेस शटल का टैंक था हाइड्रोजन कैरी करता था तीन चार गुना बड़ा था ऑक्सीजन के टैंक्स ओके 
तो उतनी स्पेस वो जब तक यू नो यूज नहीं कर पाता हाइड्रोजन फ्यूल यू नो उस पर यू नो लाइक वी शे इन्वेस्टिगेशन और स्टडीज ऑन क्रायोजेनिक लिक्विड ऑक्सीजन आप कर सकते हो पर उसको वो लिक्विड ऑक्सीजन बनती है माइनस टू फिफ्टी टू डिग्री कैलविन पे यू नो माइनस टू सेवेंटी थ्री इज एप्सिल्यूट जीरो अब उसको उतना ठंडा करेंगे फिर उसको वेपराइज करेंगे फिर उसको बर्न करेंगे तो इट हैज इट्स ओन प्रॉब्लम राइट तो हाइड्रोकार्बन फ्यूल अभी यूज में है बट जो मैं जिस बात पे आना चाहता हूँ कि वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्पेस नॉम इसे कि यार स्पेस में भी जाते ही थे स्पेस शटल ये वो तो वहाँ मार्क ट्वेंटी पे कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है टेम्परेचर्स की यहाँ पे मार्क फाइव पे आपको इतनी प्रॉब्लम आ रही है टेम्परेचर्स की नॉ प्रॉब्लम इज दैट टेम्परेचर इवन आई लर्न दैट टेम्परेचर बिहेव इज डिफरेंट एट डिफरेंट प्लेसेस जो पंद्रह डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड टेम्परेचर स्पेस में है जो हीट देता है आपको 1500 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड टेम्परेचर एटमोस्फियर में टोटल डिफरेंट बॉल गेम वाई डू आई से दैट यू नो जैसे आप ऊपर ऊपर जाते हैं वी नो दैट डेंसिटी कीप्स रिड्यूसिंग एयर डेंसिटी एंड एयर पार्टिकल्स कीप बिकमिंग अपार्ट यू नो दो डिफरेंट डिफरेंट होते जाते हैं तो जितनी डेंसिटी कम होगी टेम्परेचर चाहिए उतना ही होगा हीट एंट्रोपी जिसको बोलते हैं वो कम होती है फॉर एग्जाम्पल फिफ्टी डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड टेम्परेचर कोई बड़ी बात नहीं है आजकल राजस्थान वगैरह में या रॉकी एरिया में 46, 47 तो दिल्ली में हो जाता है राइट right? तो 50 डिग्रीज में आप घूम सकते हो यू नो यू कैन रोम अराउंड इन 50 डिग्री एयर टेम्परेचर ओके नॉट ए बिग डील बट 50 डिग्री टेम्परेचर ऑफ वाटर नाउ ओके आपका गीजर सिक्सटी डिग्री पे सेट होता है ओके अब इमेजन कैन यू टेक बात विद फिफ्टी डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड हॉट वाटर यू विल बर्न ओके सेकेंड तो टेम्परेचर सेम है फिफ्टी डिग्री थर्मामीटर विल टेल यू 50 डिग्री एयर टेम्परेचर 50 डिग्री वाटर टेम्परेचर बट द बॉल गेम इज टोटली डिफरेंट बिकॉज वाटर इज मच थिकर देन एयर सो 50 डिग्री टेम्परेचर इन थिकर एटमोस्फियर इज मच यू नो प्रॉब्लमैटिक देन 50 डिग्री टेम्परेचर इन रेयर एटमोस्फियर फॉर एग्जाम्पल अब दूसरी चीज भी आ जाइए माइक्रोवेव हम सब ने यूज किया हुआ है कई बार माइक्रोवेव 200 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड पे प्री हीटेड होता है 200 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड जिसमें आप डिश रखते हो ठीक है डिश निकालने के लिए लोग ग्लव्स यूज करते हैं हमने देखा है घर पे डिश रखने के लिए आप डिश ऐसे रख के हाथ निकाल सकते हैं बाहर सो माइक्रोवेव में यू कैन पुट योर हैंड एंड 200 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड एंड टेक इट आउट ऑयल बर्न्स बॉयल्स एट 170 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड ओके नाउ कैन यू इमेजिन कैन यू पुट योर हैंड इन द ऑयल एंड टेक इट आउट नो यू कॉन्ट इवन थिंक अबाउट राइट so that is the difference which uh, you know density creates so which we should give a feeling ke bhai aap google karoge what is the temperature at uh, you know 600 km thermosphere jahan pe end hota hai it will tell you uh, temperature at 600 km will be 1700 degree centigrade because of solar radiation and thermosphere but that 1700 degree centigrade and 1700 degree centigrade at 30 km altitude are entirely different things to handle so that is where this technology in scramjet you know becomes very very critical materials kaun se use kar rahe hain you know that uh, carbon composites different composites i mean so much of invention or so much of innovations are on ke what kind of materials to uh, use uh, you know in in these uh, uh, kind of uh, things another thing about scramjet is like jaise humne bola ke bhai supersonic पे वो बर्न करेगा टेम्परेचर उसको एयर को अब सुपरसोनिक स्पीड हमने बोला 340 मीटर्स पर सेकंड अगर वो मार्क टू मार्क 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 सॉरी नॉट मार्क मार्क टू मार्क थ्री जो के अबाउट 700 मीटर्स पर सेकंड या 1000 मीटर्स पर सेकंड पे एयर आ रही है और आपका कम्बस्टन चैम्बर है वन मीटर यू नो दो तीन मीटर की तो पूरी मिजाइल होती है वन मीटर के कम्बस्टन चैम्बर में आपको वो एयर बर्न करनी है जो थाउजेंड मीटर्स पर सेकेंड से चल रही है means one millisecond you get for a air parcel to burn so resident time and reaction time these two terminologies you know what is the reaction time of fuel and air and what is the resident time of the fuel inside the combustion chamber so your reaction time has to be less than the uh, resident time if your reaction time it's called damkohler's number in, in you know in science mm. if that is not uh, you know within control uh, then there is a different problem so That is why this scramjet technology or जो uh, इसमें है that is why this is so important. And now we come to the hypersonics proper. Actually speaking, when you look at hypersonic things, you know now we will stick to uh, certain things. You know three uh, things which are uh, weapons. You know let's call them weapons. Okay. So basically, I think you have 
three types of hypersonic weapons. One is aeroballistic missile, means which is essentially uh, air launched. Okay, and you launch it with a rocket or something. It leaves the atmosphere, goes into space, builds up speed, and strikes at very high mark, mark eight, mark nine, whatever it is, and strikes the target where Kinzel fits in. Okay, mm. it is a aeroballistic missile. Classically, does not meet all the criteria of a hypersonic cruise missile, which we said that it should stay. It it should go hypersonic within the atmosphere. It does not do that. Okay, since it is ballistic missile, comes probably has a little bit of maneuverability, but mostly it is ballistic. A ballistic me kya hai? It is like you know, it is a predicted path. We talked about it a little bit in our earlier when we were talking of rocket uh, forces that uh, it. Path is predicted and it can be intercepted. Probably that is the reason that most of the Kinzel missiles now subsequently could probably be intercepted, uh, you know, by the uh, by air defense missiles because the path was kind of predicted. Now the innovation where second comes in is without the scramjet is called boost glide vehicles. You know, uh, what was the requirement? People thought that I need to be fast and I need to be maneuverable. That means my path should not be predicted. Right, so they designed hyper, uh, you know, boost glide vehicle. Now, the, what does this boost glide vehicle has? A aerodynamic shape. It develops lift, aerodynamic forces for which it has to Indeed. stay in the atmosphere. Because if yeah. atmosphere air nahi hai, dynamic pressure nahi hai, then it cannot develop uh, lift. Right. So what happens is this boost glide vehicle is taken up, you know, uh, up in the air, left at relatively lower altitude, and now. It you know moves in the atmosphere, uh, producing lift. It comes down, skips atmosphere, goes up and down, and till quite late you don't know where is it uh, going. Okay, it has a particular range depending on what altitude it was uh, uh, set at, and it really glides it. actually glides, but glides very fast. Now anything which moves in the air will experience drag, right? So what happens is this drag will continuously keep reducing its speed. And to maintain for that speed and L by D ratio, it will have to keep coming to thicker atmosphere. You know, lift is produced by. Oh, ha. Uh, uh, Niche aata rahega fir. Niche aata rahega. So that is how it comes. And now it has to strike with high speed. Finally, you see, you cannot afford a boost glide vehicle. Niche aata rahe, aata rahe, aata rahe, aata rahe. Aise karke gir jaye. Wo nahi chahiye na. So what happens is, after some time, its lift vector, you know, they say, which is upward, is tilted. You know, it rolls and tilted downward. Which brings it down now with the greater force, and it strikes the target at very uh, high speed. Okay, but now comes that if you did not want this drag to affect it as unpowered flight, that is where the scramjet came. That we wanted cruise missiles. That third category is hypersonic cruise missile. So cruise missile me kya hai ki now you have a scramjet in there. You know which uh, now it does not need to depend on its L by D ratio or moving. That scramjet engine, engine which produces thrust, will overcome drag, will propel the missile uh, at a fast uh, speed and cover whatever distance. But you know what is the limitation? Is that time that for which scramjet can function? You know ah, how okay. long can it run? Is depending on what your range is. Okay. So now, when you see the programs, you know when you come to Russia, for example, Kinzel missile we have discussed, which is aero ballistic missile, and it is it launched its Avangard program. You know, Avangard is a boost glide vehicle, you know, which is taken on some SS-19, SS-19 missile, taken up. It's a sea launched thing, taken way up, and now from there launched and essentially nuclear head. It was made for nuclear head. Nuclear, okay? Hanji. Hanji. To develop nuclear, so accuracy was never an issue like we discussed. You know, even if it doesn't have to have a pinpoint. Ah, uh, nuclear में क्या फर्क पड़ता है सर आपको पूरा. बिल्कुल ठीक है. So now that is what. But what Russia uh, launched when it comes to hypersonic cruise missile is what Zircon. You know, uh, somewhere it's written Triscon, somewhere it is Zircon. That is missile which Russia says is a hypersonic cruise missile, and only Russia seems to have it. Okay, a Deployable weapon. It has been tested, but its range, you know, varies between 600 kilometers to 1,000 kilometers, depending on what are you referring to. But let's say an average of 700 kilometers. That is all that the range it has, because the scramjet engine, I think, in Russia has been tested up to about 300 seconds. Okay, 
So if it runs for 300 seconds and is running at 2 2.5 kilometers per second, okay, then uh, and it's not through beginning to end that it is running at that. You know, like we discussed, it it will be accelerated to that speed. So that will take some time. Then it will uh, you know come into operation and then uh, you know it will run for that much time. So the range uh, uh, will be uh, limited, right? Similarly, when we come to now China. Okay, uh, we uh, China DF seventeen you call which is talked about. हाँ जी उन्होंने बनाया है कुछ कुछ testing भी करी थी हाँ जी cruise glide vehicle ही है वो hypersonic cruise missiles नहीं है you know they are ground launched right DF seventeen or DF forty one और जो आजकल आ रहा है you know that DF ZF okay हाँ is is a cruise uh, glide vehicle now advantage China seems to have is that they have tested scramjet up to about six hundred seconds as per the Open source literature uh, available. Okay, that means the range it can goes to obviously higher. You know, twelve hundred kilometers uh, uh, or probably little more. Uh -huh. But you see, yeah, they they are limited in range. The cruise missiles will always be limited in range, right? Because of the scramjet uh, operation issue, right? So what happens is now, uh, you know, when when this uh, uh, missiles are uh, the problem. What I was coming to is that it's mating with the Uh, the missile system you know missile cannot become very big especially if you know you want to air launch it which we will come to when we Size, see the weight program han ji han everything ji. matters okay so only that Most much of engine you can put okay Haan. so aerodynamics also you know scramjet ya hypersonic ki totally different ho jati hai ab aap aircraft dekhiye aircraft mein engines hain wings hain right engine is quite separate from the wings even in a fighter hmm. aircraft you know ab engine ek jagah pe hai लिफ्ट प्रोड्यूसिंग बॉडीज आर सेपरेट बट स्क्रैम जेट हाइपरसोनिक्स में क्या किया कि जो हाइपरसोनिक की बॉडी है वही इंजन है वो आप बॉडी जो है वही इम्पिंज करके शॉक वे बना रही है वो उसी से आप थ्रस्ट प्रोड्यूस कर रहे हो तो जो एयर फ्रेम की शॉक वेव है इंजन की शॉक वेव के साथ इंटरफेरेंस होना शुरू हो जाती है जिसकी एरोडोनिक्स समझना कॉम्प्लीकेटेड है और उनकी इंटीग्रेशन इज इवन मोर कॉम्प्लीकेटेड राइट so what happens is the these kind of things when you want to mate these technologies that is where the uh, challenge comes okay and now when we you talk of uh, this uh, uh, usa uh, you know uh, stuff then uh, usa you know prompt uh, global strike we have heard of it you know what 2008 9 mein e jab ye hypersonics ki baat shuru hui ya you know uh, वेरियस सिंग सो यू एस ए को ऑल्सो दे थॉट के यार दीज फॉरवर्ड बेसिस मे नॉट बी अवेलेबल टू यू ऑलवेज ओके सो दे लॉन्च दे सेट के वाई कॉन्ट बी लॉन्च इट फ्रॉम आर आर यू एस ए मेन लैंड यू नो सम स्ट्राइक सो दे स्टार्ट ऑन फैल्कन प्रोग्राम फैल्कन वॉज यू नो फोर्स एप्लीकेशन एंड लॉन्च फ्रॉम कॉन्टिनेंटल यू एस यू नो दे आर वेरी गुड एट एक्रोनोमिक्स ओके तो फैल्कन इज फोर्स एप्लीकेशन एंड लॉन्च फ्रॉम कॉन्टिनेंटल यू एस ओके so he said the president said that we would should be able to launch uh, you know strike anywhere in the world within one hour any target in the world i should be able to address within one hour time why because the scenario changes you know somebody is going to i get hardened you know through some that some uh, time sensitive target what we call you know some leadership ah, wo matlab abhi hai kal ko nahi hoga abhi ek ghante baad scenario change ho jayega do ghante baad hmm. so i want to be able to strike anywhere in the world within one hour okay that was the requirement given from which this programs started okay now they also developed this htv you know hypersonic technological vehicle etc their boost glide system has got much higher range probably double the range than china and russia okay 4000 kilometers tak they have uh, tested you know uh, what it can do but uh, then their program uh, you know air force navy army had different different programs army had long range hypersonic weapon program okay navy had its own program air force had this arrw arrow also they used to call it you know uh, air launched rapid response weapon okay it's still running into a bit of uh, you know funds issue etc and then hypersonic air breathing weapon concept you know on which they are likely to build hypersonic attack cruise missile now difference between usa and other countries is that usa never wanted to develop hypersonic weapons for nuclear delivery they always wanted it only for conventional delivery and when you talk of conventional delivery then accuracy becomes important 
बहुत विदाउट एक्यूरेसी कन्वेंशनल थिंग इज नॉट रियली यू नो इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल आई वुड से no what is the problem between hypersonic and accuracy i mean if normal missile can be accurate so can be hypersonic not so simple you i i left uh, one small thread there that you know what problem comes at hypersonic speed we will talk later i said you know like what, what happens something different beyond hypersonic now the air which surrounds uh, you know the body at uh, molecules there is oxygen there is nitrogen there is various kind of gases when you heat them to very high temperature around a body their molecules start breaking up they start oh, breaking up and they they form a plasma kind of thing ha oh, yeah electrons they form a hmm. plasma and what plasma does is it blocks all the communications you cannot communicate with the missile now you oh, can earth ke aas pass jaise jo aap ghuste ho when you when you reenter earth earth ke atmosphere mein ghuste ho wo bhi ek plasma प्लाज्मा फॉर्म हो, हो जाता है मतलब उस टाइम पे बट यू आर नॉट यू आर नॉट इंटरेस्टेड इन यू नो इन गाइडिंग एनीथिंग प्रिसाइसली देयर एट री एंट्री यू नो यू आर नॉट इट दैट ऑल री एंट्री व्हीकल्स एंड फाइनली कम एंड स्प्लैश डाउन इन पैसिफिक ओशियन और यू नो समवेयर एल्स बट व्हाट हैपेंस इज द दिस दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग एंड मोर इंपॉर्टेंट देन दैट कम्युनिकेशन व्हेन आई सो आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग ऑफ रेडियो कम्युनिकेशन आई एम टॉकिंग ऑफ सेंसर्स यू नो यू नीड रेडार सेंसर टू गाइड द मिसाइल टू द प्रिसाइस टारगेट or you need okay. ir sensor or you need electro optical some kind of thing which can see right now these things will not function uh, over those temperatures that is why all these missiles whether you call it kinzel or you call any df17 etc when they will come close to target none of them will remain classically hypersonic they will all come down to mark 2 2.5 because their sensors have to uh, work at those high temperatures those sensors will not uh, work because so if it has to maintain speed of you know 6 mark or 7 mark or 9 mark what they call in the atmosphere at 100 meters that plasma formation or the temperature will be so high nothing will work you know i mean tomorrow new to, technology uh, is sir precise targeting kaise karoge agar aapka precise uh, that is that is where the uh, which feels that usa is running behind it is precisely this precision you know somebody wrote somewhere that you know when uh, 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 somebody wrote an article saying that you know is usa lagging in the hypersonic race so uh, I, the people on the know how he said you know it's running a different race it's not even in that race okay so there and another issue avi what happens is usa is a democracy the challenge in usa when you read more is more of policy related issues you know funding issues not technological issues now every time you will feel that air force demanded you know so many billion uh, 13 billion dollars for its arrw program congress stuck it down they said no no money is available etc etc they said okay we will shelve the program so many programs have been shelved in hypersonic regime dinosaur project for that uh, matter you know dinosaur was launched uh, and you know it it would have done wonders but it was called off in 63 because they thought that no no it's not really but it very peculiar name dinosaur huh? if, if you have heard of it but you know it doesn't have anything to do with the uh, extinct species it was short form from dynamic soaring s o u r because the scientists saw that the this vehicle dynamically soars into atmosphere so they said ekalo oh, this dynamically soars it so from where the uh, thing the came the dinosaur the dinosaur yeah okay x15 for example you know manned mission okay which was hypersonic mission it used to come and glide and land so many missions have been shelved because uh, funding issues some policy issues etc etc which probably they will uh, you know uh, take uh, care of now okay and now uh, last i mean we can't uh, conclude uh, without talking of india like you said okay india mein kya ho raha hai sir wo batao that is the most critical <laughs> see India may it's purely open source information you know nobody can tell you nobody will tell i mean i am conscious of the fact i read the other day and i wrote a line on uh, linkedin also you know one russian uh, general has been held for spying and they, they say he gave away some hypersonic uh, secrets you know to uh, uh, other country so uh, i just uh, said that okay maybe russia is getting paranoid uh, about it i don't know how much uh, was it true i mean no one wants to land up in that situation certainly so pure purely which if we see what is there in public domain hstdv what we call you know hypersonic technology demonstration vehicle is a scramjet uh, engine which was launched on agni 1 you know missile it took it up and it ran for 20 so seconds ballistic scramjet 
ballistic turned into scramjet subsequently but just 20 okay. seconds operation okay so 20 seconds operation and they used uh, uh, you know uh, uh, fuel uh, methane i think okay hydrocarbons also are interested you know kitne carbons ke particle hain kitne hydrogen ke particles hain then whether it is called methane or methene or methylene you know depends on what is a combination of you know Usme whether it is cn h n plus 2 or cn h n 2 n etc etc okay it's a different ball game altogether but they are working probably on some other fuels more efficient uh, fuels kerosene is a very good fuel uh, incidentally you know that is why in aviation it is used but uh, in hypersonics what happens is it's again reaction time you know that uh, it has to burn up faster so what they are doing now uh, and i'm sure india will also be looking at it that they use fuel to cool the system first now so when it cools the system it uh, picks up heat and it evaporates so when they inject it in the combustion chamber it's already into a uh, vaporization ready to burn kind of uh, state Situation okay hanji सिचुएशन में है दोलॉजी और दू नो प्रोग्रेस इज ऑन एंड आई थिंक वी यू नो शुड बी एबल टू मेक प्रोग्रेस ऑन दैट बट इफ यू द एडवांटेज विल बी दैट यू नो देर विल बी प्रूवन टेक्नोलॉजी इन द वर्ल्ड एंड वी हैव टू क्विकली पिकअप टेक्नोलॉजी एंड डी आर डी ओ इज डूइंग इट्स बेस्ट आई सपोज मोर थिंग्स विल कम ऑन द वे एज बी सी बट ओनली दिस मच इज यू नो बलिस्टिक मिजाइल्स इंसिडेंट okay and uh, now uh, and the you know why uh, if there are so many problems so itna hypersonic missiles or boost glide ke piche kyun agar ballistic missile and somewhere mathematically if you calculate ballistic missile will hit at a greater speed in probably lesser time on a depressed trajectory there are two kinds of trajectories ballistic missiles follow one is go very high 400 to 600 kilometers but if your target is not that far you can depress its trajectory keep it slightly lower so that it reaches faster but the problem is one i said maneuverability second is radar detection now ballistic missile which has to go way up into the sky obviously will be seen much uh, you know faster or much earlier by a ground deployed radars but hypersonic cruise missile or even boost glide vehicle to an extent which stays very low at 30 40 kilometers of altitude will be visible to the radar much later so your something which is coming up very fast at you and gives you much less reaction time is obviously more dangerous right thoda sa difficult hai some of that yeah thoda sa bhi kafi difficult and then kafi, it can yeah. maneuver you see three things you have combined you you have yeah. combined you know the speed you have got uh, late detection and you've got maneuverability i mean one you see it late and then you don't know where is it going okay so that is the the kaha ja raha hai that is the problem that is why people are getting interested in this technology and tomorrow uh, time will come i think new innovations come up uh, uh, every day that uh, uh, you know this uh, this technology will come up so in a nutshell i think i we have taken a little longer on this but i thought it was important to explain in totality that when we talk loosely about hypersonics you know iran also you know iran says now fata missile i have mm. touched uh, hypersonic okay france is working on hypersonics uk is also working on hypersonics all countries are working but credible so far when we say uh, to sum it up if we say the credible technology is still only with three countries yeah i mean you know uh, of ballistic of boost glide vehicles uh, if we talk of uh, it's with russia china and uh, america if you talk of hypersonic cruise missile deployable then i guess only russia and uh, america will is close i mean they are developing those accuracies tomorrow if the chips are down then quickly i think they can put things together and produce a missile it, it's not uh, too far and same thing probably china will do even if it's for 1200 kilometers or 600 kilometers or something i mean you know you can always reduce the scramjet timing and produce a uh, missile for all you know they may have also it is very shrouded in mystery i mean you can essentially talk what is available in open domain but you know 
to talk about hypersonics you have to work very hard because the things have to be dug out they are uh, in bits and pieces uh, somewhere Emerging written loop technology hai na sir abhi abhi nikal rahi hai technology so everybody yeah. sab kuch andar chupa yeah. ke rakhte hain log yeah so ye tha overall you know hypersonics pe uh, nahi sir this was fantastic and main kafi comments pad raha tha kafi log bol rahe the aapne bade level headed uh, examples diye hain so a lot of people have appreciated सबसे रिक्वेस्ट करूँ की प्लीज जरा लाइक शाइक कर दो यार लाइक कितने अपने पास एक सौ दो यार दो सौ दो होने चाहिए हमेशा आप सबके साथ यही रहता है and by the way guys thank you so much aaj 30000 followers ho gaye hain dev talks ke so that is something very very nice thank you sir sir ek hi sawal hai before i go to the subscribers uh, before i go to the viewers because viewers ek hi request hai yaar jab tak main ye sawal puchu sare log ek bari like kar denge so it will reach a larger audience bada acha rahega sir uh, aapne bola ki you know hypersonic speed ke upar iske andar ek plasma ban jata hai jisse it is very difficult to maneuver it because uske sensors sensors kafi kaam karna band kar dete hain you can't get any readings kya ho raha hai kya nahi hai mera ek hi ek hi isse sawal hai ki aapke paas space launch vehicles ho ya high altitude launch vehicles ho jiske andar aap ek jagah pe ek pinpoint accuracy pe ja ke ek 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 point in time ja ke ya point in space ja ke agar aap koi cheez us speed mein niche fekhenge क्योंकि आप स्पेस देखिए सर डिस्टेंस इज कितना है हंड्रेड किलोमीटर है जो वो बोलते हैं ना वो क्या लाइन है दिस दिस दैट क्रामर लाइन और समथिंग लाइक दैट क्रामर लाइन हां तो वो हंड्रेड किलोमीटर पे लेट्स से आप अब दो सौ किलोमीटर पे उड़ रहे हो आप एक पॉइंट पे जाके ऑब्वियसली कैलकुलेशन करके आपने जैसे हम लोग री एंट्री करते हैं तो इट्स वेरी प्रिसाइज तो इसकी कैलकुलेशन आर नॉट डिफिकल्ट एंड यू मेक अ हाइपरसोनिक रैम जेट थिंग गो इन साइड और स्क्रैम जेट वॉट एवर कैरिंग इट्स ओन ऑक्सीडेशन इनिशियली जब वो नीचे उस टाइम पे जाएगा सर इट इज क्वाइट पॉसिबल दैट इट कैन अचीव दैट स्पीड ऑफ फाइव पॉइंट फाइव और सिक्स मार्क एंड उसके अंदर आपका रिएक्शन टाइम बहुत कम रहेगा बिकॉज आप जब रैमडेट कहीं से लैंड से फायर करोगे तो आपको दिखेगा ये आ रहा है एंड इट्स ट्रेवलिंग ओवर सिक्स हंड्रेड किलोमीटर फाइव हंड्रेड किलोमीटर ये तो आपको सौ किलोमीटर में आएगा नहीं ट्रू बट एयर लॉन्च की बात कर रहे हो सर एयर लॉन्च स्पेस लॉन्च नहीं स्पेस लॉन्च यू सी देन दैट यू आर टॉकिंग ऑफ हाई ऑल्टीट्यूड लॉन्च या सो यू गॉट टू बी केयरफुल व्हेन यू टॉक ऑफ स्पेस लॉन्च देन वी हैव स्ट्रेट अवे गॉट इनटू वेपनाइजेशन ऑफ स्पेस इफ यू से दैट सैटेलाइट विल लॉन्च दैट वेपन नहीं नहीं हाई ऑल्टीट्यूड लॉन्च से बात करते हैं सर चलिए बाय व्हाट हाई ऑल्टीट्यूड लॉन्च बाय व्हाट रॉकेट से आएगा या aircraft se aayega that is what is happening that is what ballistic hmm. missiles do see what happens is ballistic missiles do or even air launched kinzel missile what make 31 launches it okay it Haan takes jee, it up jee. or arrw for that matter brahmos cruise, cruise missile i mean let's not talk of hypersonic supersonic missile okay brahmos is now su30 launches it right and tomorrow brahmos 2 what we are saying probably will be hypersonic missile and if that aircraft launches this is what uh, what exactly you are saying probably will happen but no no what i uh, you know you have to keep in mind uh, are the two things one thing we did not talk about that you know this earth does not seem to be rotating when you are in the atmosphere okay you have to take that into calculation yeah you know point in space let's say 200 300 kilometers up then earth's rotation comes into picture a point where it wants to head in then it's no more a straight line it has to have its calculation that where it wants to hit because earth rotation comes into place because now you are detached from the atmosphere you know again if you want me to give example aap train ke dabbe mein baithe ho तो ट्रेन के डब्बे में अंदर बॉल ऊपर फेंको तो आपके हाथ में वापस आएगा राइट बट आप ट्रेन के ऊपर बैठ जाओ और बॉल ऊपर फेंको तो पीछे सड़ा जाएगा बिकॉज़ नाउ फोर्स आ रही है मूविंग अलॉन्ग द अर्थ सो यू फील दैट वॉट यू सी फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी किलोमीटर दैट पॉइंट डजेंट चेंज बिकॉज बोथ द थिंग्स आर मूविंग एट द सेम टाइम बट नाउ इफ यू गो हाई अपू नो हाउ डिस जियो स्टेशनरी सेटेलाइट फॉर एक्साम्पल जस्ट एन एक्सट्रीम एग्जाम्पल 
फोर्टी थाउजेंड किलोमीटर पे बहुत तेज घूम रही है पर अर्थ के ऊपर ही एक ही जगह पे रहती है बिकॉज द अर्थ रोटेशन कम्स इन टू पिक्चर you know and similarly other satellites also earth's rotation comes into picture that is how with every orbit they are seeing the different place on earth okay so from those altitudes that dynamics comes uh, into picture but what what you are suggesting this plasma formation you know happen that very high temperatures where those ionization and heat uh, takes place which essentially happens in the lower uh, atmosphere you know it i mean bol raha tha uski to zarurat hi nahi hai sir sensor ki if you are able to reach that no. point no no you cannot reach that point you see what happens is these inaccuracies come purely inertial nav system ya uh, unless gps uh, ye hai unki inaccuracies come yeah. because what is inertial nav wo accelerometers hain you know gyros hain वो वही कैलकुलेट कर रही हैं कि कहाँ जाएगा दैट इज वाई जब ये न्यूक्लियर वेपन्स के लिए दे से दे आर ऑल इनर्शियल नैब्स इवन आर सिस्टम्स यू नो रिंग लेजर जैरोज हैव इम्प्रूव्ड एक्यूरेसी बिकॉज देर आर नो मूविंग जैरोज देर यू नो थ्रू लेजर दे मेजर द डिस्टेंस एंड तो फिर भी आता ही है हाँ तो दैट दैट इन एक्सिज विल कम यू टर्मिनल गाइडेंस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर पिन पॉइंट एक्यूरेसी वट वी आर टॉकिंग ऑफ वेर दीज पीपल परफेक्ट 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 आई मीन एक एक छोटा एडेंडम है सब कि उसके अंदर आप द द क्रेजी टेक्नोलॉजी जो मैं बोलूंगा वुड बी मल्टीपल इंसर्शन व्हीकल्स व्हिच आर हाइपरसोनिक व्हिच कैन बी लेफ्ट फ्रॉम अ बैलिस्टिक मिसाइल दैट विल बी क्रेजी बिकॉज़ कॉस्ट आदि यू सी व्हाट हैपेंस इज या एवरी आई मीन दैट विल बी द वेपन इफ यू सी कि एक ही व्हीकल से वो पांच या छह जैसे वो मल्टीपल इंसर्शन मर्व्स जो बोलते हैं सर या मल्टीपल री एंट्री व्हीकल मेनुवरेबल री एंट्री व्हीकल एक्चुअली ओके सो वो भी थे बेलिस्टिक मिसाइल यू नो नाउ देयर इज लॉट ऑफ डिबेट ऑन मैन आई सेड ना कि यूएसए में प्रॉब्लम है पॉलिसी डिसीजंस की तो वहां पे <laughs> ये क्वेश्चन एक सीबी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है कांग्रेसनल बजट ऑफिस और समथिंग व्हिच आस्क्स क्वेश्चन हां वो क्वेश्चन ये पूछता है कि भाई ऐसा क्या है जो ये हाइपरसोनिक मिसाइल कर सकती है और ये एमआरवी नहीं कर सकता so then they have to be explained everything okay this is because of this 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 etc etc okay so there whereas russia china don't have this problem i mean china Correct. want something if they just do it okay and it will happen okay no but no, last no, no. one word answer sir would you call up ye hypersonic missiles ko ek strategic weapon bolenge ki ek tactical weapon bolenge sir a, a, if you talk uh, of the uh, overall effect on uh, uh, battle then it is definitely a strategic uh, weapon because there are going to be few in number their usage will have to be very very calculated so you will have to have strategic implications in mind uh, you know purely from their cost and the effect you want to uh, achieve but if purely from distance point of view you want ke bhai i want to you know uh, create a devastating effect at a very large distance then cruise missile will be out of it then your boost glide vehicles etc will come into play which probably uh, you know will can have effect at very large distance 3000 miles maybe 4000 miles uh, subsequently but i would say that the amount of money it's going to cost or the amount of technology that is involved etc you're not going to waste it over some sundry targets which other uh, you know uh, your weapon systems can uh, take on so it's not going to be showmanship it will be very very considered uh, uh, decision so yeah. that is why that usa kept it only to uh, you know non nuclear they said okay we don't want to get into that uh, nuclear race uh, on this on hypersonic uh, technology so that is why that accuracy and other things yeah. Yeah. so guys kitne 150 likes ho gaye 300 bande dekh rahe so let's make sure thode se aur de lijiye aap please thank you so much and let's get as long as they have understood and enjoyed nahi 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 sir lot of people have said ma'am i mean i am i'm i'm being very very uh, this thing there are so many people who said super explanation you know very very clear aapne you know very early examples so you've taken very very simple examples jisse humko sabko samajh mein aaya hoga uska to koi i don't think there is a problem in that Uh, guys, before I get into your questions, as I said, like, subscribe, करिए जिन्होंने नहीं करा है काफी सारे नए नए नाम है यार so please uh, subscribe to the channel as well. You can आप लोग contribute कर सकते हैं directly करना है तो मुझे ऊपर क्यू क्यू आर कोड स्कैन करके कर सकते हैं नहीं तो यू कैन सेंड अ सुपर स्टिकर और सुपर चैट या फिर आप मेम्बर्स बन सकते हैं जिससे मेरे को याद आया हमारे तीन नए मेम्बर्स ज्वाइन हुए हैं जो बीच में ज्वाइन हुए हैं एक मिस्टर uh, रमेश बाबू Mr. Deepak Sharma and Mr. Kevin D'Souza, thank you so much for joining in. 
थ्री ऑफ यू आई थिंक इन द पास डे आप लोग ज्वाइन करें सो लेट्स गेट इन टू योर क्वेश्चन एंड सी आप लोग भी क्या कहते हैं बत्रा जी सेज हाइपरसोनिक मिसाइल्स आर टू ऑफ द टू टाइप्स आर ऑफ टू टाइप्स फर्स्ट हाइपरसोनिक क्रूज मिसाइल्स आर हाइपरसोनिक लाइट वेहीकल्स इंडिया जस्ट टेस्टेड रुद्रम टू एंटी रेडिएशन मिसाइल्स योर व्यू इन इट्स no no rudram 2 is not is none of these uh, categories i think uh, they are uh, standard uh, missiles i mean we wanted to make uh, uh, anti radiation missile actually you know rudram 2 uh, uh, which would have a uh, passive radar seeker uh, had you know rudram 1 rudram 2 we are going to rudram 3 and the difference between these 1 2 3 is just the extended range you know and maybe some quality of uh, terminal seeker rudram 2 for example we wanted to uh, have a pass- you know we were dependent on these radar seekers on russian missiles called p31 and they would come in three categories s band c band and x band so depending on now everything has got three different heads so you depending on which radar are you likely to look, for example hq9 you want to target or hq16 you want to target or some other missile uh, you know every radar has got a different acquisition band and different uh, fire control radar Signature. right mm-hmm. fire yeah fire control uh, the frequency invariably the acquisition radar has to look very wide and you know uh, has to scan much larger area so works on little lower band on fire control radar you have to form a very sharp uh, pencil beam you know so you end up using higher frequency so depending on but the target always remains generally the acquisition radars because uh, it looks wider etc anyway that's a different uh, scenario but what i am getting at is that we wanted to develop this missile uh, which would combine a large band you know now i don't want to state the band it may be confidential in nature but what happens is a larger band which will cover you know a lot of uh, uh, stuff okay that which can target uh, many sensors in one go and on top of that put one terminal seeker you know problem with, with the passive seekers is that if the radar switches off then the missile will just Big get lost hmm. okay or let's say i launched a missile and uh, a mobile radar has moved from there or it just switched off you know it has no radiation or it will probably uh, go on its last known position and like we said it will develop uh, inaccuracies on the way the idea was that it continues to get that signal continues to home on it because of which you need a terminal seeker that okay even if radar switched off at least that mmw seeker will be able to see it will you know locate it and uh, uh, fire there so putting all these things together is what this rudram series is i don't think they have uh, anything uh, uh, to uh, you know uh, with hypersonic uh, uh, series uh, anything you know i must tell you wadi i always enjoy i am look forward to questions you know not with a name to answer them frankly i i get to learn you know especially uh this gentleman i mean they are so intelligent last time you know remember moon i think he had only brought in that and all of us went back actually and looked up that you know what this technology is and what things are uh, thank you for that okay so i am happy that i have been able to answer at least rudram and why uh, so because uh, we have all uh, while in the air force direct uh, directly dealt with these kind of uh, i mean these weapons while they were uh, under development uh, stage so Frag out! Thank you so much for your contribution. He says, "Sir, countries like USA and China coming up with new dedicated electronic warfare cam- combat aircraft. They've been doing it for a while, like F-18 Growler. The Chinese are coming up with the J-11. Do we have any such programs? We uh, uh, dedicated uh, electronic warfare uh, aircraft. If you see, probably not yet, but it will be on the scene. Currently, our multi-role fighters are all equipped." with the electronic suites you know rafael has come with a beautiful uh, spectra electronic a uh, suite you know it uh, looks after a whole lot of things we been having jammers a uh, whole lot of things on you know uh, uh, we had dedicated uh, yeah ew aircraft earlier you know there used to be a, a, a f35 dedicated squadron for ew role what we called okay even when we inducted mirages there was a particular squadron with ew role you know while the aircraft could do much more so slowly when the capabilities increase uh, aircraft have tended to become more uh, multi role because as multi-role. it is we are struggling with the number of uh, squadron so dedicated aircraft tomorrow you know these uh, raytheons etc when they uh, come up uh, they are coming up with these aircraft uh, you know which, which will be dedicated uh, 
on uh, this kind of role most of the technology again may be little under development uh, stage etc currently not but probably in the times to come yes f111 adwork was used quite a bit in the iraq war uh, maya sarabai asks uh, i saw russia is working on a defense against icbm is bharat also working on anything similar that can take out yeah, an icbm yeah, yeah. yes yes of course s400 is for that okay s400 and our we have ballistic uh, missile defense bmd what we call okay complete program is there okay so what it does etc i mean again uh, is uh, uh, what do you call uh, i mean uh, you can't uh, talk uh, not that you can't talk about it you don't know much about it okay it it's a, a confidential uh, uh, scenario but s400 uh, was essentially against uh, icbms and like i said you know Uh, you have to understand another thing icbms can be intercepted but all these uh, systems you know s400 etc or 300 they're point defense systems you know you have to deploy them at the area which you want to protect Where they can't protect a wide defended. area yeah that you want to be defended because the trajectories or interceptions are such that they can only be uh, you know protect that area within very short cross range you know uh, system so basically yeah, well, point defense system integrated yeah. air defense system hona chahiye that that is what is the key yeah yeah so ye aapne bataya tha iske bare mein you can't control it so usa has dropped it you've actually told us in detail about this thing so i just want to bring it up big texans up thank you so much for that comment i absolutely agree with you but main screen pe dal nahi sakta kyunki aapka comment bada interesting hai offline main sir ko dikha dunga ye for sure theek hai uh, Tejas uh, said, "says Sir is uh, Blackbird SS-71 once outpass outpaced a missile fired at it while spying in Russian skies. So, so documentary title: The Insane Engineering of SR-71. This is a well-known incident. There are, yeah, there are a lot of uh, you know when you read it, SR-71 in fact was called you know the aircraft which uh, outran the missile. Okay, yeah. so because like I told you, it it had a very unique. Uh, I mean, it's a treat to watch that engine configuration. You know that jet engine works, and it continues to work at a particular speed. Uh, you know that jet engine thing closes, and all the air coming is now bypassed. Okay, which now yeah. becomes like a ramjet. Okay, and then it closes when you are decelerating. The ramjet operation stops, and now uh, you know it becomes. You've seen uh, it, sir. Normal engine. You've seen. Which you've one? seen an SR seventy one. No, no. I I saw it in um, one of the museums while I was in London. But uh, that's what all. Yeah. I would have loved to see that thing once. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's yeah. it's a Indian. You know massive. these aircraft. Uh, you have to see to believe. V two bomber, for example. Now that we are talking of aircraft, you know that museum. You go. you can do your morning walk from one tip to another tip i mean you have to see to believe it how huge an aircraft can be you know it's amazing the people who made those kind of aircraft correct sir uh e- excellent discussion on how it works what i want to know Thank is you. india can actually make this or is it some technology transfer No, In India, I, uh, DRDO. I think they uh, they are making it now. I would just like to say that you know this technology transfer, etc. Uh, probably there is no technology transfer uh, as far as hypersonic because concepts are known. You just have to. There are few things involved in this. You know, materials are involved. Some control systems are involved. I mean, technology is known. Only thing you have to produce those materials. Some bright engineers tomorrow will come up and produce those materials. Uh, people know what is to be done. Okay, you don't have the wherewithal to uh, do things. So even if you have to buy certain things tomorrow, you have to build a capability. I look at it, you know, uh, personally that you need to acquire certain capability with whatever it takes. You know, put in something yours. Put in. you know back borrow steel like we used to have earlier uh, a colloquial term okay uh, so get whatever we want within the possibilities and uh, build a technology uh, which serves us well which probably will they are at it you know i have seen their laboratories in uh, drdl they are working very very knowledgeable scientists i must tell you and uh, you talk to them things are on their fingertips and uh, you do get confidence Uh, once you meet people in person, that probably we will end up uh, somewhere. Probably, provided sorry, the right push is there. You know, like your R and D funding, your etc. etc. needs to continuously uh, 
pour in. You know, your testing facilities have to come up. We did not talk about the, those things. You know, you must have heard news. China now has a new wind tunnel. You know, it can test up to Mark 30. We also have wind tunnels. They can test up to, you know, very high Mark numbers. But basically, they were made for space, Mark 12. They, they, basically, they were made for space kind of shuttles, you know, to test satellites who go at high Mark numbers and things like that. But uh, for wind tunnel testing for hypersonic kind of things, we'll have to test uh, different kind of, uh, uh, you know, aspects that, like I said, aerodynamic mating. Uh, two, four things individually work in a different different manner it's and once you put them together it's a new dynamics it's like right. a team you know individually a guy may be very good you know individually you meet i mean again colloquially speaking you meet a married couple okay individually man is very good individually woman is very good okay but how they are together is the game okay i mean how they uh, complement each other uh, it, it, as far as performance is concerned, how well they, uh, you know, uh, get together is the technology which becomes an uh, issue. So individually components are tested, uh, but once you join them up, joints come up, you know, all these uh, loads work on the joints, etc., etc. So all those testing requirements uh, are important. Sir, so, MK Sundaram says, uh, considering China's track record on transparency, uh, it is essential to take the claims with a pinch of salt. They have a history of being less than forthcoming with information. Absolutely. No I agree with you. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. And everywhere, you know, where people uh, say that uh, uh, their claims need to be, uh, you know, whenever they, like, even when I said 600 seconds, they have tested. Now, somebody would say, please take it with a pinch of salt. My point is that uh, this, uh, uh, it is good to be, to know that, okay? Uh, okay, if they say 600, how much will it be? 500 or 400, which is not bad. <laughs> what I'm saying is it is equally dangerous. So uh, it is not a question of no statistics or semantics. It is that overall when you see how, how dangerous the thing is or the technology is what is being developed because we are not giving any marks for uh, some seconds or some range or something. It's not a competition. It's not a uh, entry in uh, world, you know, Guinness Book of Record or something. It is operational uh, capability, right? Uh, so uh, even if they tell a bit of lie or whatever it is, I think it's okay. It makes us, uh, you know, become prepared better. Tactically or technically, I think you are prepared for the worst. Like we say, you know, be prepared for the worst. So it makes you being prepared for the worst, I guess. So point, uh, his point will be valid that in case I was to give up my, uh, uh, you know, program, I say, oh, shit, yaar, I can never reach what, say, China ne draw the America. You know, he says, oh, mere paas to thousand second ki capability hai. I say, shit, yaar, wahan tak to pahunchi nahi sakta. Kya fayda ye karne ka chhoad do. Vaisa nahi hai, thik hai. 600 hai, 600 hai, 700 hai, 700 hai, 1000 hai, 1000 hai, wo aap ki capability hai, right? So what I'm going to develop is, uh, uh, you know, what I'm going to develop and good if I have a higher target uh, in mind. Absolutely, sir. I mean, they, China, to, sir, aisa hai, kuch bhi, kabhi kabhar to aise se uske claims rehte hai ki you wonder ki ye, they mein bol raha hai ki kya kar raha hai. Yeah. Nikia Ori, uh, hypersonic missiles are a deadly weapon if it's used by people with brains. You may first you must first overwhelm the defense system with cheap drones or cruise missiles. People have been studying, you guys have been really studying the Russia-Ukraine war, I must say. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You see, what happens is it's uh, now uh, either uh, probably, uh, it will be uh, situational, I, I would say. You know, it, it's not, a, it's going to be certain set game. Let's say, uh, it's like now uh, having to I uh, develop a very costly hypersonic weapon, etc., etc. And now I have to use these systems to make grounds for its use, probably. Okay, then uh, somebody may again say, okay, why, uh, what is the utility of it, right? What is it like hypersonics we talked in detail, the kind of capability it will portray, okay? Uh, uh, I think... Uh, there will not be requirement in my uh, considered opinion. You know, I'm, I'm sure people uh, have their own thinking that you need to soften any defenses or something because the whole crux of hypersonic missile uh, lies uh, in its survivability, you know, which is very, very mm -hmm. high. When you come to the crux of it, it is very, very 
डिफिकल्ट यू नो यू यू सिंपल थिंग यू नो ये लोग यार क्रिकेट खेलते हैं तो स्पिनिंग बॉल को हैंडल करना मुश्किल हो जाता है नो बॉल विच इज गोइंग टू चेंज डायरेक्शन इज डिफिकल्ट टू हैंडल राइट वी से दैट राइट एंड वेरी सिंपल एग्जाम्पल बट दिस इज मच मोर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड okay and it's very fast it will change direction at places and it will give you very little time so i don't think when you need to brains yes of course there is no doubt about it i would uh, you know go with this statement okay don't waste these uh, weapons just because you have them you know your target choice will have to be very very critical that way do you use right. it you don't end up wasting these weapons over uh, you know something frivolous uh from that point of view yes uh, i think uh, you know if uh, he has that in mind ke okay, bhai things which drones and other systems can do to soften up defenses and to do your job probably have brains not to use uh, you know uh, right. hcm there from that point of view yes shivam sharma says how to counter hypersonic is an in- any initiative going on they everybody is doing that you know what happens is any counter technology always will lag the basic main technology you know you talk of drones you talk of counter drones you know they are always i mean some technology comes up a counter has to develop i think it is law of nature you know if there is a birth there is a death okay so the cycle has to continue you know you develop hypersonic technology you the continuous research is on uh, parallelly that how to tackle this but only thing it will lag slightly because this technology will have to mature we will see how it is moving and what probably can be just a, a quick one on that how to detect hypersonic missile we said now that it will appear on the radar much later you know if you go through the radar equation i mean i can uh, say it depends on height you know height of the object and height of transmitter and receiver etc a very a simple thing you know you uh, uh, curvature of the earth you know makes uh, that that is what uh, uh, makes it not possible for the thing to see very far because they are the earth is curving away from you so the higher it is you will see it that much uh, farther right so now you have space based sensor you know uh, hypersonic space based sensors which what do they detect we just said that hypersonic weapons will develop a hell of a lot of temperature so people say why not use this uh, ir which is there around the missile to detect it so you have ir sensors through space you know now they are studying what particular frequency this uh, temperature will transmit you know at what stage will it be picked up so now there is already some kind of capability there that uh, you will be able to detect this missile by space based sensor but the problem is it is more difficult not that everybody will have space based sensors now right we are purely talking of laws of physics okay how many people have it is uh, entirely different but it will be possible to detect this missile so now if you have detected this missile probably you will plan some defense uh, against it some algorithm will come after all uh, are the uh, this maneuverability when we say it is not uh, now i must clarify here if somebody got a different idea it is not going to be able to maneuver with the respect to reaction to something for example if this is a missile coming and uh, i have got this missile coming it's not that it will avoid me and go there that is not what maneuverability is it is that if my target was this so this missile could be going this way and somewhere here it will turn here it is pre programmed and it will come and hit here so it from its initial trajectory i can't make out which what is it going to be yeah, the target so if people slowly will understand that algorithm there can only be only so many algorithms you know and you decode it now that uh, okay if the missiles first two maneuvers are like this and like this then most likely its third algorithm may come like people crack passwords you know how do they crack passwords banking passwords or something like that that they follow certain algorithm they study hell of a lot they feel ke generally what do people use so if i start with my some name then what am i likely to use more i mean they study so much and they are able to crack uh, uh, password similarly they will probably crack this algorithm and plan a defense for it it is purely uh my thought process i mean not that it is uh, written anywhere that it will happen this way but i presume uh, this is how it will uh, function so uh <clears throat> one second sir yes if uh, good evening sir if kinzel hypersonic and uh, forms plasma around it then how did russia manage to strike accurately in ukraine 
No, no, no. Like we said, it is not. I, I, I would qualify again. It says Mark Nine. You know, it only was hypersonic in space as it descended below, and plus, it, it probably does not have those kind of terminal seekers. You know, it is purely going on uh, uh, that. Uh, you know, uh, I and GPS guidance or something like that. You know, the kind of sensors we are talking of, which require pinpoint accuracy, probably it will not have. And it, this uh, require it uh, struck a bunker. I mean, it didn't go through window of a. Uh, uh, you know, uh, what we call uh, of a building or something, right? So that much accuracy, it will probably have like all DF-21 ICBMs, etc. They will have a good ring laser gyro, you know, will give you certain accuracy over that. And what range are we talking of? You know, 1200 kilometers, it's a Skandar missile, basically ground launched missiles, air launched version. It is, uh, it's launched from, uh, you know, MiG-31, so they call it Kinzel. It's basically in a Skandar missile, okay, uh, surface launched. And 1,200 kilometers is about 1,000 to 1,200 kilometers of range. It goes into space and comes down. And while towards the terminal uh, side, it does not, it's nowhere close to that temperature which will f form uh, plasma because it is desolated enough. You see, it has no power now. It is coming ballistic. Moment it enters atmosphere, etc., the, the continuous drag is on. It is not even a boost glide, you know, which is going and developing lift. It is purely ballistic coming down. It will be desolated. And uh, the final hit speed, in my opinion, will be nothing more than Mark 3, 3.5. Even if it's 4, the plasma does not form uh, at that kind of... Uh, mark number that will come into picture when that scramjet comes into operation and keeps that mark number high through and through uh, within the uh, lower atmosphere it's quite and again mark 3 is a good enough speed mind you you know it, it is not just because we are talking of hypersonic it does not by any means uh, make mark 2 or 3 any less you know like brahmos for example strikes at mark 2.5 we are talking of close to 800 900 meters per second that's hell of a lot of velocity and uh, a, a, even kinetic energy will be good enough to penetrate anything you know and on top of that if it has warhead then it will go uh, uh, through and through uh, i mean there is no doubt about it so i must say i mean there are just so many, you know, discussions about this, that, and the other around in, in the in the comments with regards to your your explanation about various things. Kafi logo ko sir, aapka explanation ka karne ka tarika bada pasand aaya. Logo ne bola ki impressively simple, or even a tenth grader could grasp them efficiently. Thanks for clarifying intricate systems concisely. Lot of people Thank have appreciated you, this. I must say, yeah. kafi logo ne bola ki bhaiya, this session has been really really nice. And uh, coffee, uh, you know, I'd like to really congratulate you on this. Because uh, this is a technological jo, jo, jo aspect, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, I know. No, I got Yeah, even when I started, when I got interested in uh, uh, this uh, hypersonic, I mean, you know, now that I have time, every book that you open from page two or three onwards, get into differential calculus because they're written for engineers. You know, they don't want to uh, probably waste time on these things. And they want, uh, they are written ke how to design a missile, what happens, you know, intricate calculations. And my aim was only this, that how to, you know, translate those differential integral calculations into uh, simple language. And I'm simple glad things, to know that if I have to, I have been able no, to sir, do that. Uh, all... comments itne sare. They were, this is a technical session. We almost, you know, we had a hire of about 300 people watching us at, at one time, which is very good. Uh, you know, it is very good that people are interested up in this way, which is very, very good. And I'd really like to Humbly say that ki aise aise sessions so that we can learn sir. At least, or yeah. nahi, koi bacha -bacha ga, kisi ko koi interest aega, apni mein kuch karega, aur desh ka bhara karega, aur kuch nahi. I mean, that is one of the biggest things that we could achieve through sessions. Because the interests are there. I geopolitics ka ek session. I saw something about geopolitics. 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 So it's it's an inspiration talking to you, sir. It was super fantastic session. I must say, I really enjoyed it myself. Thank uh, you so much. So I hope for a lot many more in the future. Guys, please like, subscribe 
एंड डोंट फर्गेट टू टेल योर फ्रेंड्स हुज इंटरेस्टेड इन टेक्नोलॉजी दैट ऐसे ऐसे सेशन भी डेपटॉक्स में होते हैं विद एक्सपर्ट्स लाइक एम आशल बेदी सर वंस अगेन थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू अरुण